Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared, and this video is about six folding knives, six pocket knives, and what makes them great. Why are they great knives? Starting the list off, we have the Tucson TS223. One of my favorite Tucson knives. They, it, this one comes in M390 or 14C28N. I believe you can only get it in M390 now, but what's beautiful about this thing? Well, just looking at it, you can see how functional it is. One, it has a drop point blade. Now, looking a little closer, you can see it has a nice, tall, broad, full flat grind. So the grind itself is made to cut. The geometry of this blade is amazing. It gets down nice and thin behind the edge without being fragile. It still has a nice robust grind or robust spine, but the, the taper of the geometry is so tall, it gets down nice and thin behind the edge. So the blade passes through materials extremely easy. Now, the sharpening choil, it's made to be sharpened. This is a knife that is made to be used. You can see that it allows you to remove a lot of steel before ever hitting the plunge grind. And it keeps a lot of distance right there for when, when you're sharpening. So the life of the, the blade is going to look, or even just the looks of the blade is going to last a very long time. It's always going to look, you know, pretty much the same. Now, the ergos of the handle. They match the, the blade so well because you get an incredibly comfortable grip. When you hold on to this knife, it has, the and for me personally, it has the perfect thickness, height, width for an amazing grip. Then you look back here, you can see how this chamfers down. That fits right in your hand and nestles right in. I, this is locked in really good. Now, I do have this little spot right there that I can choke right up for real hard pushing uh, cuts. Access to the lock bar is pretty good. The detent is super solid. Really good detent. Now, my other one does fall shut. This one is more of a slow dropper, but the action is still really good. The only thing is the detent is a little late. It is a little bit of a late detent, but you can still get past it. Now, the other things that make this amazing is if you look at it, you can kind of see how the blade, it's subtle, but the handle canters this way and the blade kind of canters down this way. So in the hand, when I'm holding it, it's facing angled towards what I'm cutting. So it's when you're doing cuts, the, the blade can easily stay in the materials as you're cutting. Now, the tip is not too robust. It's uh, really good for utility cuts. You have just enough belly to do, you know, any type of um, slicing you need to do with, that doesn't require a tip. So this knife is an incredible user, an incredible work knife. And it comes in high-end materials, and you can get this for like 130 bucks, 140 bucks or something. Um, <laughs> from other companies, this would be a $250 knife all day. The clip works very, very good. This is one of their best clips. They have micro milling all over it. Um, full titanium with, well, not full, titanium bolster lock with carbon fiber, really well done carbon fiber, T8 hardware all the way around. And this one is an M390. Like I said, though, they do have the 14C version. All the bells and whistles, um, ceramic caged bearings on a racetrack. It's just, oh yeah. And look at these stop, look at the stop pin, internal stop pins. You see the stop pin right there? My favorite type of stop pin locks up rock solid. This is an incredible, incredible knife. All right, now the next one. We had to get through these. Holy cow. The next one, this, the Spyderco PM2 Classic. What a classic. Now, what's great about the Spyderco PM2? Well, before we get into just the knife, one thing that's really cool is that they do so many different options of this knife. You can get this knife and, you know, not always, but they do exclusive versions every once in a while, and they'll drop different versions. Like, this version right here is in K390, one of my favorite steels. Now, there's also other steels that I love uh, pretty much just as much, like Crewware, 
They do one in crew wear. They, they do all these exotic steels that people would love to experience and try, and the Spyderco PM2 comes in them. So you can get a PM2, especially if you, you know, wait for the drop or if you know when they do drop them, you can get the PM2 in just about any steel. Um, the handle material, same thing. You can, and this is aftermarket wise, but aftermarket wise, you can get any type of part for this. You can get a deep carry clip. You can get different scales interchangeably, different hardware, different colors. You can dress a PM2 up. <laughs> you can dress it up so much, you know, to, to the point to where, you know, you make it for yourself. You know, here's a couple examples. Now, these three are not mine, but we have an S30V blade with titanium milled scales that have stone washing on them, black hardware. Then we have plain titanium with blue hardware. This one's still getting worked on, um... So this one needs some more parts ordered, but you can see where it's going. Deep carry clip. And we have one here with white G10 scales. And this steel on this one is S45. Um, what was the steel on this one? This one was S30V again. So, so many different options and ways you can make them your own and dress them up, dress them down. This one's in brown micarta, and I have a CME, um, OCD for EDC makes these. It makes it to where it has a button on the compression lock. So that's the next thing. What's awesome about this knife? The compression lock. So Spider Co's infamous, <laughs> I don't know if that'd be the right word, but Spider Co's compression lock. It's a very strong, durable lock that holds up over time. I believe it can, you know, it, it's not that it holds a ton of weight. I forget what its fail, failing point was, but it's incredibly strong, very durable, lasts a very long time. It always locks up nice and solid. It has three points of contact inside its lock. It's basically a, a liner lock that goes in between the tang of the blade and the stop pen. And it forces itself to get stronger and stronger, wedging the liner in between those two points of contact. It's very fidgety. It offers a nice drop shut action, and it's still on washers. So this is a false shut type of action that's on washers, because when you when you press the lock, it takes the the detent and locking system out of the situation, and makes it to where it's just the pivot holding the blade up, so it can fall shut. The handle um, has lots of fixed grips, so it's not a neutral grip, but it allows you to get up nice and close to the blade with this with this choil. Then you can go back here and lock yourself into the jimping, and the blade is a beautiful example of a very versatile blade shape. You have a lowered dropping tip for utility cuts that works very very well extremely well it can be a bit dainty and break if you do drop it but it does work extremely well for those type of cuts then it has a tiny bit of belly for the type of cuts and you have a nice long edge 3.5 inch blade for you know doing push cuts or any type of cutting um the reverse grip even though it is a fixed um you know fixed grip you can get up right behind here and your your fingers fall into a great place, a great leverage point where you can cut straps and things like that. It's a great example of a work knife that does not have neutral grips because a lot of times with fixed grips, meaning like that there's only specific places you can put your fingers comfortably, um, a lot of times that winds up not being a very good idea for work knives and things like that. But in this case, it works out great. So the Spyderco PM2. Next. <laughs> the hinder xm18 i don't care which one i love my little three inch this is the three inch version we have the flipper thumb stud and it has a fuller for the reverse flick this is the spear point now this one is the drop point without a flipper I think this one will be considered the spear point. I'm pretty positive. But either way, the point is that this one has a non-flipper. So I can take advantage of the ergos. It is so comfortable, 
super, super smooth. The detent is perfect. You can upgrade all these parts. All these parts are interchangeable. Now, the XM18 3.5 inch, you can see here, this one's got my car to scales with the blue titanium hardware and back spacers. Beautiful. And it has a tri-way pivot. So the tri-way pivot makes it to where you can change your pivot out. To, if you want bearings, you can have bearings. If you want washers, you can have washers. If you want Teflon, you can have Teflon. And it comes with the knife. Now, all these parts you can get. Like, I have another scale for this. A titanium scale with a battle horse on it. It's amazing. It's beautiful. Now, here's the XM24. So, this knife comes in every size that you would want. If you want a smaller compact knife, then you'd want the three inch. If you want just a, a full size work knife, you'd want the 3.5 inch XM18. If you want the big dog, <laughs> you gotta get the 24. 24 is a beast of a knife. This one has a titanium scale on it. So this is a full titanium XM24 with a triway pivot. Now, these things are, one, just incredibly well-built, very tough knives. They are, the, the, the owner of the company, Rick Hinder, designed this knife basically for first responders and to be able to handle just about anything. It's not supposed to be your everyday slicey tasking knife. This is supposed to be a battlefield knife, um, a rescue knife, a... You know, like I said, a first responder knife, a knife that can that can stand up to conditions and do the things that you wouldn't want to put most knives through. And it is built like a tank. And that is the beauty of it. All the hardware, you can see how many um, standoffs we have. You can change the clip out um, to either direction. The hardware is very well built. The action is really good. Some of them are nice, are really stiff at first. Mine is very much broken in, so it is really good. I have the, the bearings. Oh, yeah, I have Gillian bearings on mine right now. But either way, even the regular bearings that come on the Hinder are still really good. But this is just a great knife that you can make it your own. You can dress it up, change all the parts out, change all the colors, have different scales, do whatever color you want, and it comes in so many different options. Even this one comes with a non-flipper option. But those are very hard to get. A lot of hinders are hard to get. But point is, is that if you, you have still an opportunity to get a knife, you know, if you wait, if you look around, you know, if you search for it, you can get any size of this knife you want. It comes in multiple different blade shapes, so many different blade shapes. Then you can make it whatever colors, whatever themes you want. There's little tabs right here with skulls on them, so many different options, but it is still a, a very capable, hard use, heavy hitting knife that's designed to be, you know, tough. Now, while we're on that theme, Let's go into one that's similar, but not not so much, but just the look. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So let's pull up my XM18. We have the CJRB Scoria. If you like the design feature of this knife, the blade shape, the type of ergos it has, the nice choil, flipping and thumb stud action, but you want it more of an EDC friendly type of knife you know obviously you can go with the three inch version of this but the cjrb scoria is a it's extremely slim way slimmer than the xm18 by far but it's a con it's more of a compact edc friendly um that style of knife and i don't mean style meaning like hard use heavy hitting any of that interchangeable parts no i'm not saying anything like that but it has the same design features with the, the same blade shape the same type of action um same type of ergos just more compact and slim and it actually does come in multiple different options i personally like this one the best i did wind up getting a micarta version which is a white mountain knives exclu or wait knife center exclusive Am I right about that? I think it's Knife Center, um, which they have tons of different options. I personally like the G10 one a little bit better. I think the, the micarta scales are just a little too slim, and it feels just a little too dainty for me. This one is nice and solid. Like, it's so much more solid. It feels more robust. And so I personally appreciate the, the G10 version a little bit better. 
but they do have all kinds of options and colors. So comes in ARRPM9, which is special to Artisan. Artisan developed that steel. It does take a really good edge. Um, but yeah, just a really good compact EDC knife that has that, that type of shape. And what's cool about it, or what's awesome about it, is that it has a very useful design. It allows you to get locked in behind the, the flipper tab where you're not going to slip up the blade or anything. And you can lock in back here. Beautiful blade shape with a long flat section for your push cuts and things like that. It does have a little bit more belly than possibly than I usually like. I usually like a little bit more clearance to my tip. Um, I like my tips to be centered with the pivot or slightly below. And in this case, it's slightly higher. But regardless, great, great knife. Slice is really good. Great action. And it's a great carry. Easy to carry. The clip, the titanium clip works great. Titanium clip, titanium um, thumb stud, titanium pivot collar. Ceramic caged bearing action, great action. It is a great knife. Um, but yeah, that's what's kind of great about this one. It, it it has the same design features of what's similar to the, the XM18 while being more compact, slim, EDCable, and um, more, more EDC friendly, I guess you could say. Next, another very EDC friendly knife, the TR. M Adam. Now the TRM Adam is a a really lightweight EDC friendly knife. It's not hard use. It's not a tough knife. It is exactly that. An EDC knife. The scales, all you have to do is take these two screws off and they pop right off and you can put new scales on. You don't even have to take off the pivot. It's very easy to interchange the scales. The blade is a drop point blade and 20 CV ultra smooth action it is on phosphor bronze washers so it's not the ball bearing action but what it does give you is ultra smooth action these are ext when i first grabbed one it was actually a, a neutron and right just opening it i was like oh wow i see why people like this because it's so silky smooth it's crazy how smooth it is it's very it's frictionless but the, the compactness and slimness of this knife is what kind of makes it awesome. The blade is super thin. Nice, slim blade. The very slicey geometry. Thinness behind the edge, it's not crazy thin behind the edge, but like I always say, it's not about the thinness behind the edge. It's about the geometry of the blade and the, the, the thickness of the grind. And in this case, it's very thin and has a nice broad blade, so it's super slicey. Now, the Ergos are really comfortable, but it is very thin and slim in the hand. So, it's not going to be something you're going to want to bear down through really dense objects, but, you know, as long as it's regular EDC stuff, this thing works like a champ, cuts like a beast. Um, TRM does a great job with their heat treat, at least from my experience. The clip... <laughs> You can just see that that clip works well. And it's not that uncomfortable in the hand. Yes, I do feel it, but I usually stay kind of close up by the blade. So my hand lands on this area. Great access to the lock bar. And yeah, the great thing about this knife, one, the scales, right? You can interchange the scales so easily without taking it apart. But just how lightweight and slicey and EDC capable this knife is one of the most capable and useful blade shapes the grind cuts like a beast and it is super slim and easy to carry so you have a knife that is extremely slicey extremely extremely slicey while having a great heat treated steel on it and super slim in the hand and yeah just a, a great fantastic lightweight edc knife now last knife on this list, we have the Kaiser Roach. <laughs> the exact opposite of everything we've been looking at. So, what's awesome about this knife? So, this knife originally came out in a titanium frame lock knife. Now, I'm not saying it wasn't a big hit or anything like that, but it kind of was overlooked. And once it came out in a liner lock version, people kind of drew attention to it. One, the action is just ridiculous. Detent, nice and solid. 
great breaking detent. So once you crack that detent, it flies. Beautiful leaf, um, leaf shape blade. So the, what's cool about this is one, it does not have neutral ergos. It has a fit position. But if you look back here, you can see right where your pinky's supposed to go and how your thumb lands right over right here. So in this grip, it's super comfortable, but you always have the ability to choke up to this spot. And when you're like this, if you look at the blade, it's somewhat leaning, you know, just look at it like this. If you look at the handle, you can kind of see that when your hands are wrapped around this, this is right where your thumb kind of lands, even if you're like this, you know, this kind of protrudes up into your palm. It kind of leans forward just a tiny bit, but that makes it to where you, your edge is aimed at what you're cutting. So it stays in the cuts really nicely. Now, when you go into a utility cut grip, you can see the spine, how it lays right in your palm. It makes it to where you have maximum force down into a utility cut really comfortably. And it works great. The geometry, it is... I'm not going to say robust because the, the thinness behind the edge is pretty good, especially for how broad the blade is. So because of the broadness of the blade, this thing slices really good while still being pretty robust. So great geometry, great geometry, especially for the ergos you get. So it makes it to where you have fixed grips, but the fixed grips they do provide, at least from my experience, work out exactly how you want them to in the type of cutting that this knife is made to do. Um, now, the reverse cuts, that's where it will fail. So it's not going to be the best for cutting straps or anything like that. So it does fail in that area. Can you get by? Yes, you can. But anything with the blade facing towards what you're cutting and away from you, man, this thing, it works so, so good. The, the micarta is really, really good quality. You can see all the fibers and it does um, age and patina very nicely. It does come in a couple different options. The choil area is nice and big, so regardless of how big your finger is, it should be comfortable for you. Great access to the lac bar. And yes, it is a somewhat larger frame knife, meaning, you know, just like the, the, f the footprint it has is quite big. But if you like that, then this is a knife that is extremely useful in a lot of ways and it does wind up working out really good especially if you're doing certain types of cuts so that's what's great about this knife and the rest of the knives i love you guys thank you guys for watching peace